To make a section in Rhino, run the section command and select the objects for sections. While this tool is quick and easy to use, it rarely makes an interesting section drawing. Another approach is to use the clipping planes in combination with the make2d command. Run the clipping plane command. Since I need a vertical section, I'll toggle on the vertical option. Move the clipping plane for live feedback. Let's switch to shaded view to see the section. The section is not visible, we only get an elevation. That's because the clipping plane is not activated in the front view. In the clipping plane properties, you can flip the direction of the clipping plane. You can also select what views are affected by the clipping plane. As soon as I toggle front view, the section appears. In addition to the section command, this technique will show the geometry behind the section plane, creating a more interesting drawing. Convert the view to a 2D drawing by running the make 2D command. Select the objects to be used, press enter and then OK in the options window. The 2D drawing is available from the top view. I'll move the drawing aside so we can improve the section even more. In front view properties, you can change the projection mode from parallel to perspective. Now your view will change to perspective mode, allowing you to see spatial relations. Be careful not to orbit in the viewport, as this will destroy the section scale. You can still pan in the viewport if you like. Now repeat the make 2D command. The section you just created is out of scale. Use the scale tool and reference point from the first section to get the scale right. The drawings you create using the make2d command is organized into layers. Unfold the make2d layer to reveal the sublayers. The clipping planes layer contains the lines for the section. I'll rename this layer to section and change the layer color so it is easier to distinguish from the other layers. If you hide the other sublayers, it is easier to apply the hatch. Now run the hatch command and select the lines you wish to hatch. Use the boundary toggle to click inside the regions you wish to hatch. Finish the selection by pressing Enter. As default, Rhino will make a solid hatch if you click OK. You can also do more elaborate hatches. As always, I start by hiding the layers I don't need. Repeat the hatch command and select the regions to be hatched. In the hatch window, you can choose different patterns. I'll stick to a hatch made from straight lines, then rotate the hatch 45 degrees. If you zoom in really close, you can see individual lines. This hatch is way too dense, so I'll change the pattern scale until I get a desirable result. Let's make the hatch for the tiles on the floor. Unhide the other layers and run the hatch command. Select the pattern and adjust the scale. If you want a specific starting point for the pattern, click the set base button and pick a starting point on your drawing. I've completed hatching and moved the hatches into a separate layer. Now it's time to print the drawings. In Rhino, you create a layout, a sheet of paper with one or more details, drawings that is. Click the plus symbol and select new layout. 
In the layout window, select the paper size and give the layout a name. Then click OK. Rhino will make a layout and add a detail containing your drawings. If you click the border, you can change the scale of your drawing in the detail properties. Currently, the drawing is a 1 to 122 scale. Click the field and type 50 for a 1 to 50 scale, then use the tab key to confirm. Double click inside the detail. The detail is now live. This means you can pan in the viewport to organize your drawings. Double click outside the detail frame. If you switch on points for the detail frame, you can crop the drawing just like you would in Photoshop or InDesign. Copy the detail and adjust the content to show the ground floor. To make sure the drawings line up, create a line and use it for snapping. Add text to your plan using the text tool. Print the plan. Since this is a video tutorial, I'll print to a PDF file. If you zoom in on the PDF file, you'll see that all lines are the same thickness. This is no good. We need to adjust the line thickness to establish a hierarchy and make the drawing easier to read. First, I'll change the print color for all layers to black. Next, I'll adjust the print width of all layers individually. The wall is a major element, so it will get the thickest line. Hatches are minor details, so I'll choose a fairly thin line. The lines above the plan will be made from thin dashed lines. When you have specified the line thickness for all layers, print the file again. Now, if you zoom in, you can see that the drawing is much more elaborate. 